المنتجبين واللعنة الدائمة الأبدية على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم كتابه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد كذبنا في الزبور من بعد الذكر أن الأرض يرثها من عبادي الصالحون آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليكم sons and daughters brothers and sisters ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله we are going to continue our session last night we started an introduction today also we'll have to continue a little bit introduction before we enter the real topic or the real history and today we are going to talk about uh, the approach of uh, Sayyid Muhammad al-Sadr We mentioned the analytical approach, uh, analytical approach and then uh, uh, we mentioned that there are certain challenges. What are these challenges? These challenges are, uh, for example, we had uh, an issue of uh, supporting our concepts from the non-Shia resources, non-resources uh, of followers of non ahl bid The more we are able to convince others and bring them under the umbrella of the awaited one for the peace and justice of the world, the more we are going to have a strong base for us. And uh, as we mentioned, re respecting each other's differences in any system on this world, who's supporting any system on this world, who's supporting the concept of peace and justice, true peace and justice, that means providing proper peace and proper justice to humanity, regardless of what their nationality, what their ethnicity, what their... The system is not going to contradict with the system of the 12th Imam Anjal Allah Ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif, because this is the system which Imam is going to bring. And many countries, they are trying to put this system into work, but somehow they are failing in practical... Uh, when 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 in applications when it's practically applied, they cannot apply it properly. Why? Because the people who are who are trying to apply this nice, beautiful system of peace and justice, they are they are they are corrupted people somehow. Many systems you will find that they want, they want, and they love, and there are some constitutions also placed to provide peace and justice. But the problem is those who people who are who are implementing it are not. Um, not, uh, I mean, um, uh, they, they, they lack peace and justice in themselves. So if you have people, uh, they lack this peace and justice from inside themselves, how can they implement it on other people and the community? So that's why the, the, when the Imam comes, people, he will come when there will be people ready to implement from inside. It all starts from here, from inside, and then goes out. I, am I, if, if, if I'm a corrupted person from inside, how can I implement, or how can I apply, or how can I, uh, I, I work in the system? So that's why the whole idea is not just the system. The system is there. We have Quran. We have many systems on the earth. They're trying to put nice constitutions uh, which provides peace and justice to the humanity, United Nations, and all these kind of things. But practically, it's not being applied properly. Why? Because those people who are, who are practicing these kind of systems are not prepared to, or are not practicing on themselves, you know? So how can we have a proper system or, or, or proper application of practically we have a proper system where the, 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 the people who are many of the majority, I'm not talking about everybody, there might be some place, some country, some city, they are practicing it properly and nicely, but uh, most of the uh, situation in most scenarios, it is not practiced properly. On not, I'm, I'm again saying there might be some places they're practicing it properly, but the majority of the world, you will, will find turmoil, economical problems, political crisis. Why? 
because the, 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 there is no proper application for many of these uh, uh, systems which are presented on the world. And most of these systems, they fail to provide proper peace and justice to the people of the earth. <coughs> Excuse me. As for the narrations, uh, and, and when we come, we said that uh, we are going to support uh, with the uh, people of book. We are going to support with non-Muslims like Buddhists and all this. If the more we support our concept from these books, the more we can convince them properly and strongly. Or we use the intellectual concepts, intellectual because it's intellect. It's not Quran. It's not Bible. It's not. It's Akan. Whoever has proper sound intellect, he will have to accept it. So intellectual concepts, and then we have the Holy Quran, and then we said that the Holy Quran is good for all the Muslims. And then we have the narrations from the School of Companion, good for our fellow Muslims. And then we have the narrations of Ahlul Bayt, Ali Musalat which are good for the followers of Ahlul Bayt, Ali Musalat Whoever wants to take this hadith, they are most welcome because they are not narrated by fabricators, they are narrated by descendants of the Prophet like Imam Ja'far Sadr Imam Ja'far Sadr says, whatever I narrate, whatever I tell you is from my father. See the link. It's from my father, from my grandfather, from his father, from his grandfather to Prophet How? In some of the hadith says, whatever I say is from my father Muhammad al-Baqar which is from his father uh, Zayn al-Abideen which is from his father Imam Hussain which is from his brother Imam Hassan which is from his father Amir al-Mu'mineen Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib and which is from the Prophet Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then which is from Jibra'il narrates by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, Imam's hadith, if Imam tells us, Imam Sadat, Imam Qadim, all the Imams, whoever tells us something, that it is already linked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to this golden chain of infallible uh, Ahlul Bayt. If you don't believe that they are infallible, then they are pious. They are pious and they are acknowledged by many of those people who are living in their time, that they have never ever seen any problems in these people or any corruption in these people. So therefore, uh, if you say they are not infallible, then at least their pious and justice, their, their piety and their, their peaceful nature has been proven by the Muslims who are living in that time. Shiblinj Shafi'i, this is one of the followers of Shafi'i, he has written uh, a book on the history of the Shia Imams who are the descendants of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yanabi al-Mawadda lil Hanaf al-Qanduzi. He also talks about the narrations or he talks about the narrations narrated by Imam Sadiq Ali He narrates the narrations of Imam Sadiq Ali from the sources of school of Ahlul Bayt Ali So the bottom line is Imam Sadiq is not a Shia Imam. Imam Abu Hanifa, which is one of the uh, one of the uh, four uh, leaders of the uh, madahib of uh, Ahl Sunnah, the Sunni madahib, four madahib, Imam Hanafi, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, Imam Abu Hanifa. These four Imams, Two of them were students of Imam Sadiq which is our Imam, which we take all our jurisprudence from the narrations of Imam Sadiq So, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik ibn Anas. These two were students of Imam Sadiq They attended the classes of Imam Sadiq And two other Imam Shafi and Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, they narrate the narrations of Imam Sadiq So, uh, most, of the, most of our uh, uh, brothers in Islam, they, they are either following this, 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 whoever they follow, they have taken uh, a big, big deal of their knowledge from Imam Sadiq Ali either by attending the classes, either by narrating their, uh, their narrations or his narrations. <coughs> Then, and then we will have some uh, problems regarding the weak narrations. How do we deal with the weak narrations? Because you know that if the narration is linked by proper narrators, then it's authentic narration. But if there is a missing link, and there are some certain uh, reasons where the link has been missing, because uh, the followers of Ahlul Bayt were traced, especially the narrations of Imam, Imam the 12th Imam Ajallah Ta'ala Faraj al Sharif were considered like a betrayal, you know, to the government or something like that in that time. So that's why when people they narrate, 
they don't uh, they tell okay don't narrate on my behalf okay due to the security reasons so what will happen that uh, the narrator says i heard from someone who heard imam sadiq or um, someone narrates from imam sadiq they will not mention their name name of the narrator for the security reasons because these, these governments were very tyrant governments Anybody who's linked to our Imams Ali they will chop their heads, they will torture them, they will put them in prison. All kinds of uh, brutality was practiced uh, against the follower of Ahlul Bayt Ali Musallam, for be it Imam Sadr Ali Musallam, Imam Musa Qadim. Most of our Imams either they were poisoned or either they were killed uh, by uh, sword, like Imam Hussein and Imam Ali Ali Musallam were killed by sword. All of the Imams, they were poisoned by the tyrants of their time. So therefore, uh, the, due to some reason, the link is missing. So whenever we have a hadith which has a missing link, we cannot say, like for example, the author of the book and the Imam. So author of the book to the Imam, there are narrators, one after another. This is called the link. The author of the book wrote the hadith, who heard from this person, who heard from this person, who heard from this person, and, 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 and this and, and, and we call from from... And until we come to the Imam itself. Now, if, if there is some missing link here in these kind of historical ahadith, then there may be some circumstances which prevented them from, uh, uh, from mentioning, uh, disclosing the name of the narrator in that time. And that does not mean that the hadith is fabricated. That means the hadith could be authentic, could not be authentic. So it brings the hadith from the level of authentication to the level of doubt. That means it might come. So how will we know? When the prediction starts to come out, we will know for sure this hadith was a sahih hadith. Like for example, <coughs> uh, the, 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 the iron will fly. People they used to think miraculously, iron will fly. Nowadays we have these big iron birds, airplanes, they're flying. So uh, the, 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 in those days, you know, the narrations, uh, the, uh, this narration is, doesn't have a link. But now we know that it's an authentic narration which was said before 1400, which was written in the books before, the, before they had this idea of flying uh, metal uh, birds uh, in the sky. And now you will see these metal jumbos and airplanes that are flying all the way uh, in, the, in the sky. And this is prediction from the Imams Ali Wasallam and a prediction from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the future. So many of these weak narrations. So why are we going to study weak narrations? Because we need to be aware that this might happen. If that happens, what will you do? It's like just how to plan to prevent yourself from the possible danger or possible threat, which happens with an intellectual, uh, when somebody tells you there may be a lion or there may be a snake, you know, you will take extra precautions. And if you will say, oh, this person is a, a, a weak narrator or this person is a, a liar, you know, and ignore and you will we see a snake which will bite you, then you will regret. Why didn't I hear this person? So that the intellectual society, they take their precautions on the possible danger. So these, these narrations, if they don't give us strong, uh, strong um, uh, certainty, at least they give us a kind of 50% possibility of many of these things happening. Of course, there are things that are narrated by authentic narrations, but uh, m many of these ahadith, they don't have link. That's why it brings them down to the level of uh, doubt or possible. And our duty is to prepare ourselves because if this possibility happens, like the ions will, uh, iron will fly, then we will regret, oh, why didn't I hear the hadith? Why didn't I hear? Why didn't, why didn't I prepare myself? You know, so that's why the whole idea is, as for the narrations, which are not strong, but create a link to generate historical chains of events, then we will consider it uh, in our research because it brings links to it links the events together like this is proven this is proven there's a weak narration in between it connects makes the link we will take that to make a good uh, scenario link <clears throat> since the appearance of Imam Ali Salatu will be in a time which is in ad, uh, which is advanced in science and technology and will be socially different than the time of the narrations then most of the narrations indicating miraculous acts or supernatural events will be taken metaphorically unless if uh, the only indication if the only indication 
was to observe those literally, such as everyone will hear him or see him. For example, it does not require any explanation due to the technology of media. So, for example, we mentioned this in our last session. Just quickly, I'll mention. Uh, Sayyid Muhammad is Sadr Rahmatullah. He tries to avoid the miraculous uh, ahadith. He believes in miracles, but he says if we can explain this ahadith in a in a reasonable uh, in a reasonable explanation, uh, realistic explanation. Or if we cannot, then we can take a metaphor. If we cannot take metaphor, then we try to explain it uh, in the miraculous uh, explanation. So that's why if everybody will hear, like uh, those days, they will think, oh, miraculously. Now there's no. If you talk east and west, everybody can hear you. So because of the media technology, this hadith now can be understood. Uh, certain challenges in the narrations. Many narrations are symbolic in their meanings such as the beast, which could be a system, as it will be mentioned. Though the narrations talk as if it is a real beast, but comparing the characteristics of the beast as certain systems nowadays, it seems that the narrations were presenting a symbolic message that is due to the mentalities of the, uh, of the people in that time and their level of acceptance, which might not... Uh, which might not understand those people, they might not understand the explicit meanings presented by the infallibles, such as like beast. What is this beast? We're going to talk about the jug is a big issue. We need to talk because we need to be very careful because there are authentic narrations. They indicate the beast, the jug, but the details there are uh, some of them. They are weak narrations. So we don't know how strong they are, as I mentioned in uh, last year's sessions. But the whole idea is that the beast is there. What is this beast? If we know this, 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 this creature or this system, then we will try to avoid coming un, uh, under the claws of this beast and become a part of it. Is that, إِذَا هَزَّ رَأْسَهُ أَضَاءَ لَهُ مَا بَيْنَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَقْرِبِ Last uh, session I mentioned that if he shakes his head somehow like this, then the uh, east and the west uh, uh, brings light. So brings light, it could be Miraculously, he shakes his head that the whole world becomes lighted, or no, it could be uh, metaphorically, uh, which is like uh, if he shake, gives his command, the knowledge, the light of knowledge spreads, or no, his commander or his chief is sitting on the on one of those uh, computers buttons, and he gives a uh, command, he shakes his head, and the person pu 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 pulls the trigger or something like that, and the whole earth gets uh, the uh, the light or the energy because we are having serious energy crisis so uh, every uh, the whole world is trying to figure out how to solve this energy crisis because the energy might fall short so the 12th Imam will come Sharif, and he will bring the uh, energy to the world and the whole world so just a command and everybody from the east and the west will get the energy I mean see we can if we have this technology we have this we can we don't need to go metaphor or a miraculous uh, interpretation. So, in some narrations, the infallibles know, but due to some uh, circumstances surrounding uh, surrounding the infallible, I mean, in some narrations, the infallible, Ali Salatu Sam knows, but uh, due to some circumstances surrounding uh, him, does not mention certain details, such as the lecture of Imam Mahdi Ali Salatu Sam in the masjid. In the once he comes, appears, he will give a lecture. The Imam Ali Salatu says that uh, I know wa ana a'lam bima lam. I know what he says, but the Imam does not give us that many details. Um, and Imam says that um, uh, the, the I know the names of the uh, supporters and their father's name, but many of these narrations he does not mention the names due to the circumstances surrounding the Imam Ali Salatu So that's uh, these are certain challenges. Understanding the narrations which has some uh, strange meanings, um, the weak narrations, and then we have the, 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 these kind of things like weak narrations, uh, the time will prove, but the possibility exists, as I mentioned. The only way to overcome such challenges is to uh, do the best to understand them. We have to understand their system. Best to understand them, and what else? We have to prepare ourselves because if this possibility comes true then we will be prepared if not then alhamdulillah being prepared is not a bad deal intellectual society accepts 
being prepared and taking precautions. Therefore, for the time being, the, sh uh, the shortcoming in the research must be acknowledged and accepted. He said, I acknowledge. We cannot give those that much facts, especially when it comes to the future and predictions, especially when there are weak narrations or not linked narrations. Predictions are going to happen as predicted, but strong predictions are going to happen uh, to, uh, to happen as predicted unless if the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes like we have strong predictions if the strong predictions they might happen like the inevitable signs the Sufyani and this and that but if the will of Allah changes then also it might not happen like what like Prophet Yunus alayhi salatu Prophet Yunus the people of Yunus alayhi salatu and Prophet Yunus told them that after three days the punishment is going to come to you degree of Allah something is going to happen inevitable but what happened after three days when they saw the punishment the clouds of punishments are coming closer they repented and when they had this repentance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes degree Allah knew that they are going to repent and Allah knew that he's going to change his degree. But this degree was shown to Prophet Yunus shown to the community. So what happened here? In this case, the, the, the whole scenario changed. It was inevitable that they were going to be punished. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed due to the, uh, the repentance. The same thing, uh, Prophet Ibrahim Allah made a decree. Ibrahim slaughtered Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. Give sacrifice and give Ismail as a sacrifice to me. Uh, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam used to say, "No salat, no sujood. Oh God, whatever my salat, my rituals, everything is for you. My life, my death, everything is for you. This you want, take it. You, it's yours, oh Allah." So when he comes and he tries to uh, slaughter Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a command and this Ismail is changed, decree changed. So even if there are narrations which are inevitable, uh, that, which indicates inevitable events, they are going to happen, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to change the decree, he can change. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, يَمْحُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases whatever he wants and fixes whatever he wants. Uh, uh, so this book, the decree, the Allah's decrees are changeable, but there is knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is not changeable. That's the self of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's, that's, that's what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all knowledge. So that does not change. Allah knows that He's going to make these changes and Allah knows who's going to go which direction, but Allah many times does not tell the people and shows a different decree just to test the people, test the angels, and test all of us. So that's why we, the whole idea is that these relations, they are predictions and they might be, they might come true uh, uh, for uh, some reason. We have to be prepared. Now, uh, the purpose of this just government, why to have this peace and justice? Why to have this just government? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created the jinns and the human except to worship me. What is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Through these secondary worships, which are which is salat, which is fasting, all these worships, they take us towards the direction of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all these, the, the whole salat, fasting, zakat, all these kind of things, they take us towards that direction, direction of connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more we connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we are not able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, proper worship, if we are not able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the true worship, the ma'rifah, why? Because we are not able to do our Hajj properly. We are not able to do our Salat properly. We are not able... Many times we have these problems. We are not able to practice Islam properly. We are not able to live peacefully in order to focus in communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our minds are all busy with political problems, with social problems, economical problems, salary, this, that, troubles. We are so much distracted. Because the system, the more it gets uh, 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 corrupted, the more we get distracted. How can in this distracted world, people, they communicate with Allah? You will see there are people, 
you know, there are people they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they just leave all these things aside and this is they just say, Oh Fawud Amri ilallah, I put my affairs in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In no basirum bil ibadi is most surely he looks at uh, his servants. So uh, he, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's happening. If I rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and isolate myself just to communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's an important thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will solve all my problems. Of course, I have to take the causes to solve those problems. But, the, but here I need to mention one thing, that these people are few people on the earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the earth uh, uh, the cre created the human and jinn to worship. So are all the human and all the jinns they are worshiping Allah the way these few people are doing? Jinns, we don't know. I mean, maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, but jinns, they they are in a parallel system to human. They live like us. They talk. They have the, they have their religions and faiths and sects and everything like us. So they are like a mirror image of our system, but in a, met in a metaphysical or a little bit uh, uh, less dense form. Anyhow, it's not our topic to talk about jinn. We further, inshallah, will talk in future if Allah uh, gives us uh, opportunity. But here, at least human, we know that proper worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not done by the majority of the human. That means we have to have a system where we can enjoy, celebrate the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ma'rifatullah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the true worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bring that system so that the most of the human being on the earth, they can know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worship Allah like those few people who are able to come out of this trap, this, this materialistic trap and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the proper way. So uh, basically in this, uh, um, uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the main purpose of the criterion is to move towards perfection by knowing the exalted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which, which is the real and true worship and should be the direction of every worshiper uh, or every worship prescribed. And that requires a perfect environment and a perfect society so that everyone can become close to him uh, by properly worshipping him. And that perfect just society requires people who have reached that level of perfection and can teach others how to reach such levels. So inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the appearance of our 12th Imam soon. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us among his loyal and sincere supporters. In his occultation and after his appearance, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all the beloved ones around the world, keep them safe and secure from every evil and every terror. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam and to bring the peace and justice soon uh, on the face of earth.